Happy March, everyone. Here in the United States, March 1st has brought with it some Canon USA price drops. Uh, we've got some great discounts now, permanent discounts on bodies, and we've got some good rebates on lenses as well. I want to take a few moments and run down the list, share some brief opinions with you about which ones I think you should snag um, and which ones you should think about third parties and others. The first thing I want to address though is why these price drops, why now? I think we've got a couple of reasons. One of them is there's been a huge flood of import slash gray market Canon cameras coming into the US in recent months. I've seen eBay prices of the 5D Mark III as low as 1900 and some odd dollars. That was a huge savings over your new and USA models. Now, is there a danger in buying gray market import? I'm often asked. And the biggest danger is, well, first off, you do want to make sure when you're buying off of eBay that it is somebody with a good reseller rating because there certainly are prices out there that are too good to be true and they are too good to be true. And when you go to buy, you get a run around and suddenly your bill is much higher or worse, you never get the product, yada, yada, yada. But from the resellers that have good ratings on eBay, you can get good deals. The risk is if something goes wrong with a camera during its warranty period, Canon USA reserves the right to say, I'm not going to service this Canon camera. We're not going to service this camera because it was bought out of country. You need to go back to that country and talk to Canon there. And so that would be a big hassle. Some of the eBay sellers offer their own warranty service. Your mileage is going to vary with how well that works out. I've heard mostly positive reports, um, but it is a much smaller, more unknown company that you're going to be working with. During the warranty period, Canon USA is, and Canon in general, is excellent and will often fix the things very quickly and have it back to you in no time. The other reason I think we're seeing these price drops is it is becoming a crowded marketplace. And as some people have started to grumble that Canon sensors may not quite be up to the other sensors out there in cameras like Nikon, Sony, Canon wants to make their cameras just a little bit more enticing by lowering the price. I don't want to get into that debate right now, but I will just say when you look at the whole ecosystem, there is still a lot to love about Canon, and you'll hear me gush about a few of these lenses in just a moment. I've got a blog post that goes over all of this. We've got the 5D Mark III on here now down to $24.99. That's body only. But we've also got this deal from Adorama, and I think it's other places too. It's just a little bit harder to find. Adorama nicely puts it right on their front page. Um, you've got the 5D Mark III bundle with Pro Printer. And that is this printer right here. And just a word of warning about this printer. It is huge, but it is very high quality. It is very professional. Uh, and it's, it's great. So you get those two things. You get a special warranty. This is the kind of, if you've got buttery fingers and are likely to drop your camera, this is those kind of warranties that you might want to think about because it covers things other than, you know, technical repairs that need to happen because of the camera malfunction. This is your accident you can still get it covered. Comes with a decent bag, nothing too exciting, but a 64 gigabyte CF card, a decent speed one, that's good, an extra battery. Now, all of these cameras come with a spare battery, but now you're getting an extra one, so you'll have two. You get all of that for $22.49. So, and then what some people do is sell the printer. Honestly, you're not gonna get a ton for this printer because this bundle's been around for a while now. Uh, and you know, once you go through all the hassle of selling it, your, your actual monetary intake is not going to be huge, but it is still going to be an additional savings. So if you were looking to jump up to the 5D Mark III now, this with this recent price drops and now this rebates on top of that, that is a solid deal. Let's move on to talk. If you want just the body only of the 5D Mark III, as I said, all of the places are offering at the same price. Canon sellers must offer at their minimum price, just like uh, Apple. You can't go below that and be an authorized Canon seller. So you're not going to find a better price unless you're going to somebody like eBay. Um, and if you see anybody else selling at a better price, again, it's probably too good to be true. <clears throat> Just point out real quick, you know, I love B&H. They throw in a lot of freebies, 32 gigabyte SD card, a spare battery, a shoulder bag, and a little monopod, $147 worth of stuff. That makes the sting of this price just that much better. I think I have that 5D Mark III open a couple times. The 6D price has come down. The Canon 6D sensor is Canon's best full frame sensor. And so if you're looking for a decent landscape camera, the 6D at this price of $1399 is excellent. Very good, very solid. I do not think we will see a 6D Mark II in the next six months 
maybe not even in the next eight to nine months. Uh, I think it's going to be a 2016 replacement. The 7D Mark II has an instant rebate of 100, so this isn't a permanent price drop, but it is still sweetens the deal. Fantastic autofocus system in that camera, and the sensor is very good too. I feel like there was a lot of, uh, and I was one of them when it first came out. I was, it wasn't. I wanted a 70D Mark II. I wanted this all-in-one camera, and Canon really isn't going that way anymore. This camera is designed for photographers, photographing action, and it nails that target market very, very well. It's excellent. I have that open for a million. There we go. Let's talk about lenses. These are not permanent price drops. These are rebates. They end March 28th. So you've got this month to think about and to buy. I imagine most of its stuff will be in stock through the month. I don't, I don't think any of these things are going to have stock issues. 17 to 40 f4 is at 699, an excellent walk around lens for full frame sensors. Colors, the contrast you get out of these L series lenses and the sharpness are all very good. I'm going to keep this video short, so I'm really going to talk about these quickly. These are my kind of top three picks out of the lens list right now. The 70 to 200 f4 is now at $609. That is a fantastic price. This lens, just like the 17 to 40, it's an L series lens, so fast to focus. Colors, contrast, sharpness are all very good, and it still stays within this kind of handheld uh, or actually easily portable lens. It really is quite friendly for travel, and it's fantastic. It's also compatible with the 1.4x and the uh, 1.4x and the 2x extenders as well. The 70 to 200 f2.8 IS. Two. This is the Mark II version of this lens. Yes, still expensive even after the rebate, but this is the lowest price I've seen it in a very long time. And these are the lowest prices we'll probably see on these lenses until next holiday season. This lens is fantastic. I, I can't say enough about it. This lens and one other lens that we'll touch on are the reason that I think many Canon photographers who are drooling over some of the nicer options from Nikon as far as sensor and feature technologies go, stay with Canon. The 70 to 200 is fantastic. It is on my camera for huge amounts of the wedding. And what we often hear from the couples is we can't, you know, we can't believe that you got that shot or we never saw you working and, you know, at the end of the night or when they get their pictures back, they're just so impressed how kind of stealthy we were. Um, and one of the reasons is this lens. It just allows you to get these really close, intimate shots without being up in anybody's face. And I think you're going to get better photos for that. The 8 to 15 fisheye, nah, just buy a manual focus lens and save a lot of money from Rokinon. The 16 to 35 f2.8, eh, buy the Tamron 15 to 30 f2.8, which is a little bit cheaper and offers VC. The Canon 16 to 35 f4, well, I feel the same. Buy that Tamron. It's getting awesome reviews. I hope to have a review copy in here soon. The 24 to 70 f2.8 LIS, no, sorry, no IS, USM. This lens is still also expensive, but I have this lens and it is fantastically sharp across its range. Weather sealed, a great focal length for just kind of group shots, for portraits up at 70. It's just a really nice lens. And if you're thinking seriously about wedding work or other types of work where you're going to get paid to cover events, this is a great lens to have. It gives you everything you need to walk around an event space for the night getting the shots you need. 24 to 70 f4. This is sold as a kit lens with some 5D Mark III kits. And at $799 now, this is much more tempting than when it first came out and it was well above $1,000. This is a great lens. It's got image stabilization. I'd call this your kind of uh, your, your nice travel lens. It's not a huge range, but it is travel friendly in size. It offers that image stabilization. It even offers a little macro mode switch as well, which it doesn't make it a real macro lens, but um, 0.7 magnification is getting up there. So it's good. 70-200 IS. Well, if you want the 70-200 but you feel like you need IS because you'll be photographing slower moving subjects or static subjects in lower light, the IS is nice to have. 70-200 F2.8 without IS, also still a fantastic lens, very sharp. We personally need the IS for wedding work, shooting lower show, slower shutter speeds in churches and receptions where people aren't moving much. That IS really helps us get sharper shots. Uh, I think this lens is less versatile without it, but at $12.99, it's a good buy. I have that open a couple times. The Canon 35 F1.4 L for $13.29. Just buy the Sigma. The Sigma 
35 f1.4 is much sharper, much cheaper. That's all I'm going to say. The 50 one l a really nice portrait lens for $13.99, but I'm going to tell you to buy the Sigma for $9.49. Much cheaper, much sharper. Now, I have a full review of that, so if you're interested in hearing more about it, you can listen or watch. The thing that I'll say is that, you know, some people make the argument that you want the Canon style that offers this kind of soft, creamy look to it. Yes, but you don't want consistent autofocus issues. And that's what we found with multiple Canon 50 copies. At that f1.2, it just does not nail its focus. You're much better off shooting with something like the Sigma. Nails its focus every time. And you can decide how you want to compose that shot. And um, you can still get a nice creamy look. The background bokeh on the Sigma is fine. This 85 f1.2 is the other reason why I think many people stick with Canon even if they're not so happy with the bodies because this lens, you can take the 70-200 to and shoot it at 85 and it's not going to look like this lens. This lens offers something that I just don't see in other lenses costing less than $4,000. You can get up to a manual focus Zeiss that will offer something like this, but under $2,000 now, this is a fantastic lens that just produces images that are gorgeous. The 135 f2, that's getting a little long for the prime range for me. I, I feel like that length is a little bit more difficult to work with, but under $1,000, it is exceptionally sharp. One of Canon's sharpest prime lenses and is a budget-friendly way to get that kind of longer focal length if you're looking to cover uh, weddings on a budget. The 100mm macro from Canon with IS, USM, L, this is the L version, is fantastic. Super sharp. That image stabilization, it's a hybrid image stabilization, one of the best image stabilizations in all of Canon's lenses. It's fantastic, and it makes this lens a very versatile handheld macro lens. There are plenty of other lenses that are almost as sharp, but without the image stabilization, um, and so you might, depends on what you want, but Sharpness, colors, contrast again, and that hybrid image stabilization make this fantastic. And then ending on a sour note, oh, I'm so mean to this lens, but it's just overpriced. I, I, 70 to 300, f5.6 out at 300 makes it challenging in lower light situations. It's just not quite that sharp to justify this price, even with the rebate, so I'm going to say skip it. That's it. Quick thoughts on those. If you've got questions or comments about these, just leave them right down below. If you plan on buying anything, one of the easy ways to support me, and it doesn't cost you anything extra, is to use my links on the blog post that I reference and is linked right down below. Let me know if you have questions. I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.